South Africa is not going to arrest Putin, despite the pressure that the West has been putting on South Africa to make a stand on arresting Putin. Former President Thabo Mbeki says it is not possible, it's not feasible, and it goes against everything that the country believes in. If the West have a problem with Putin, they should take it up with Putin, but not put that responsibility on South Africa. Uh, the, uh, there is indeed a challenge uh, in that it's necessary for the African continent to do what it has decided to do, which is to establish an African Court of Justice, which deals with all of these uh, matters that are in the Rome Statute, like genocide, uh, crimes against humanity, uh, things like that. We need an African Court to, to do that so that if the matters are tried on the continent by our own courts. The problem is that the protocol that is, was negotiated and then concluded some years back, various African countries are reluctant to ratify. Uh, I think it's because many of them think it's the protocol infringes too much on domestic sovereignty. Yes. Uh, but if they don't have that protocol, they then, they then ratify it. Then the International Criminal Court becomes the court of first resort. So this complaint we have as Africans, why is the International Criminal Court arresting so many of our people, Africans? It will continue. The reason it's doing that is because we have no capacity continental wise to, to, to try those particular cases unless we establish this court. So it's necessary to persuade the African countries. If you're complaining about the ICC, establish African Court of Justice. So then should South Africa withdraw from the ICC? Hello guys, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of the vlog. My name is Zantiro Ganga. I always enjoy coming on here, chatting, having conversations and just talking things africa black people empowerment and how we can rise up and take our rightful place at the global stage today i wanted to discuss a speech by former south african president tabo Mbeki. he was um talking during a television interview and a couple of things really came up during that interview and these are the things that i want us to dissect and have a conversation about i think the first thing would be the russian ukraine um conflict and the constant pressure from the west forcing africa to make a stand but tabo Mbeki says it's unfair to ask africa to make a stand or it's unfair to force people to see things from your perspective you know um different african countries have different interests with both countries both jointly and separately and so it would be unfair to use africans as you know pawns in the larger western game i must say it's typically african we see it happening every day on the continent. When conflict breaks out in Africa, the, all of us will say, stop the shootings. To create the conditions for discussions to end the war. So we can't start. It's, it's, you look at any issue on the continent. The continent will never intervene in any issue by starting to condemn one country or the other. It's because you need to resolve the, the conflict. You don't start resolving the conflict by taking sides. You resolve the conflict by saying, let us sit and discuss this issue. It's in the course of the discussion, of the negotiation, that it becomes possible to say you are wrong, you are right. But that's not a starting point. So whatever demand is made of, of the African continent, that from the beginning the continent must take sides, it's going to fail. The continent won't do that. I'm saying precisely to be able to prepare conditions for negotiations and for the continent to be an, an, an honest broker. Because of the diplomatic and economic ties that Africa has with both Russia and Ukraine, 
um african countries have decided to send envoys peace envoys to um both russia and ukraine to help have a conversation and see a way of navigating the war and finding a common ground for both countries and you know a lot has been said about why africa is sending um people to help solve the russia ukraine war but most of them also have war in their backyards and tabon becky says africa has such a great interest in both russia and ukraine and the war has affected the african continent the most i think it's important that the african continent has intervened at that level i think it's important because the that conflict apart from anything else has affected the continent very directly because a lot of the wheat that we get on the continent comes from there. A lot of the fertilizer that we get comes from there. And when there's a conflict, it, it interrupts those two. So even at the last AU summit, the matter of the fertilizer was raised. Because there are many countries on the continent that have not been able to use fertilizer because of the conflict. And that produces food insecurity. Mm. So I'm saying it's, it's important that the African continent intervenes at that senior level and hopefully, hopefully succeed. The part of the criticism from a president. You know, earlier when I was talking about why uh, Africans are sending people to help um, have a conversation between Russia and Ukraine, yet there's war in DRC. South Sudan is also having its own unrest. There's unrest in the Sahel region. And Tabumbeki says there are systems and procedures that have been put in place to help manage and, 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 and resolve the conflict back at home. But still, because Africa has interest in um, Russia and Ukraine, it's also important to send people there. With, with regard to Sudan, there's a similar heads of state intervention on Sudan. Uh, at the level of the Peace and Security Council, which will meet in two days' time at summit level. So that's not 15 countries <coughs> of the continent at summit level must meet and say what we do about the Sudan matter. So simultaneously, as you will have some Africans traveling to Europe regarding Kenya, I'm sorry, Equita, uh, Russia and Ukraine, you have these Africans convening in Africa to deal with, uh, with Sudan at the head of state level. So uh, the, uh, the conflict in, in, in Ethiopia between the central government and Tigray fortunately has stopped. But it has not, there are other violent conflicts that are taking place in Ethiopia, particularly in Oromia. So this is a matter that is really work in progress uh, to try and resolve these matters as a whole. And in the Ethiopian case, it's necessary to follow what was agreed in Pretoria to have this political discussion yes. between the government of Ethiopia and the TPLF of, of Tigray, mm. which must lead to a national conference so that all of the Ethiopians together come together to define what kind of Ethiopia do we want. But that's all work in progress. Nothing is being ignored. Mm. Finally, the journalist was very spicy and asked him if Russia was going, or rather if South Africa was going to arrest Putin because we've seen a lot of pressure and constant calls that wherever Putin goes, he must be arrested and he must be held accountable for Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And Tabo Mbeki says, don't put that responsibility on South Africa. If you have a problem with Putin, take it up with Putin, but South Africa is not going to do that. And South Africa does not even have the capacity to do that. So we're just seeing South Africa choosing its battles very wisely. Well, I doubt it. I, I doubt, I don't think the, the South African government would go, would engage in, a, in an action like that against any head of state. I, I doubt it very much. Uh, how they would deal with this matter, I'm not sure. But on the other hand, is that the deputy president uh, of the Republic, Paul Mashatile, is uh, leading a group to find an answer to the question what is to be done. But I doubt if they would uh, arrest the president of Russia or anywhere for that matter. Uh, the, uh, 
there is indeed a challenge uh, in that it's necessary for the African continent to do what it has decided to do, which is to establish an African Court of Justice, which deals with all of these uh, matters that are in the Rome Statute, like genocide, uh, crimes against humanity, uh, things like that. We need an African court to, to, to do that. So that the matters are tried on the continent by our own courts. The problem is that the protocol that is, was negotiated and, and concluded some years back, various African countries are reluctant to ratify. Uh, I think it's because many of them think it's the protocol infringes too much on domestic sovereignty. Yes. Uh, but if they don't have that protocol, that they, they then ratify it, then the International Criminal Court becomes the court of first resort. So this complaint we have as Africans, why is the International Criminal Court arresting so many of our people, Africans? It will continue. The reason it's doing that is because we have no capacity, continental-wise, to, to, to try those particular cases, unless we establish this court. Mm -hmm. So it's necessary to persuade the African countries. If you're complaining about the ICC, establish African Court of Justice. So then should South Africa withdraw from the act? Anyway, guys, that's all I had for you today. I wanted to just come here, have a brief session with you guys, and also give you an opportunity to listen to what Tabumbeki had to say. I'll see you again next time. Remember to like this video, um, share it with a friend, and comment down below what you think.